Sometimes, in a lean or agile environment, we might have to work very quickly in the absence of data, whether that's thanks to a shrinking budget or limited resources. As a result, we may have to go off of assumptions every once in a while in order to move forward at all and make a design. So what is the best way to do that while still ensuring our design recommendations are data-driven? I like to draw from my experience in the military as inspiration for moments like these. If anyone needs to be cautious about assumptions and their impact on a decision, it's the military. We use the Military Decision-Making Process, or MDMP. The first thing MDMP participants do after receiving a mission is a mission analysis where they look at all their data, past experience, current running estimates of their resources, priorities as determined by leadership. Then they identify the key questions that need to be answered and any operating assumptions. All right, so what does that mean for UX folks? Before you do anything else, establish an assumptions and questions document that your team can reference and add to throughout the design process. Anytime there's an unknown piece of information that would alter a decision, write it down on this list. Next, go through this list and attempt to answer as many of these questions as possible using existing user data, whether that's our own data or the data of other organizations. If we don't have existing user data, the next best thing is to ask questions of the subject matter experts in those areas. Are they not in the room? Get them in the room as soon as possible, whether that's at this meeting or the next one. If they can't be there in person, get them on the phone. The point is it's not enough to take a guess without experience. Yes, it takes some humility to admit that you don't know everything, but let's be honest, no one knows everything. Asking a subject matter expert for their educated guess ensures that while there may not be current data on this topic, there is at least historic data which we can reference. Let's say the subject matter expert doesn't know the answer. That gap in understanding is a clear indicator that follow-up research is needed. Consider how you could get that information. Will you need to run another usability study? Will it require coordinating a field study? Do you have the budget for any of that? If not, do you have a budget for an interview or a survey? As Jacob likes to say, some data is better than no data. So make sure you have active efforts to gather that data. And the way you ensure those efforts are active is to, first of all, assign that research project to a person. Document it on the assumptions and questions document and give that person a deadline because it's not enough to simply say do it. Then revisit that assumptions and questions document at the next meeting. Finally, do follow-up research, reflect, and close any gaps that you find. Once you've implemented a design decision, it's important to reflect on that choice and study its implications. In the Army, we call it an after-action review. In some firms, it's called a retrospective, but you can call it whatever you'd like. Here's what you cover. Things that went well after implementing, positive notes or good things that happened. Maybe things that did not go well, unexpected or unfavorable results of our choices. Then we talk about how we might sustain the positive results and improve upon the less than favorable ones. These findings shape the next initiative that we might undertake as an organization. So why should we do this at all? Why is it worth taking these risks? That's a question that organizational leadership must answer. But for what it's worth, no single entity will get the perfect decision in one go. And that's the beauty of frameworks like Lean and Agile. Yes, you have to work quickly with limited resources and data, but iterating often increases the likelihood of success by accepting the risks earlier versus later in the process. Also, working quickly doesn't mean working alone. By calling upon experts, we increase our knowledge base, channel the brains of many, and increase the likelihood of success. A design shouldn't be made on assumptions alone, but they can help us move forward one step at a time towards something great.